These are the new voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilization, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Stardate 95.801. The Starship Enterprise has entered the Pilar solar system, a warm, comfortable realm with 12 planets revolving around a medium-sized yellow sun. Our mission is to check the colonists of Perinda 4, a new Federation-settled planet. According to Starbase's last report, the world is one of the richest, lushest, most peaceful settlements in the known universe. Mr. Spock, what's wrong? What is going on? A Code 1 distress signal from the garden planet of Perinda 4, Captain. According to my sensors and calculations, they are on a collision course with an entire fleet of space debris. What? Meteors, Captain. A whole peck of them, all heading for the capital colony of Perinda City. Mr. Sulu, please phase out the alarm signal. Mr. Spock, is this a natural occurrence? Perinda 4 lies just inside an unusually busy space debris zone. Meteor activity here far exceeds that of Earth, but not to a dangerous degree. Debris zone? Meteor activity? Not dangerous? Makes sense, man. Mr. Scott... Earth scientists say that as many as 200 million visible meteors enter the... Air friction heats them to approximately 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and they burn up at an altitude of 30 to 50 miles. That is why they are called meteors. Pieces of space debris that hit the Earth's surface are called meteorites. Please delay the lecture if you would, Mr. Spock. What is happening on Perinda 4? According to my findings, Captain, Perinda 4 is the target for a huge amount of meteors which are about to become meteorites. Mr. Chekhov! Establish visual contact. Communications officer Uhura, establish planet side communication. Mr. Sulu, sound red alert. Mr. Spock, how long before the meteorites hit? Eight seconds, Captain. Six, five, four, three, two. The Enterprise crew watch in numb horror as the capital city is devastated on their view screens. The huge hunks of space rock grew so hot they glowed with a brilliant white and orange light before smashing into the tiny buildings on the planet, sending sweeping clouds of debris flying everywhere. The pounding, deadly rain continued for 30 frightening seconds, then ceased as quickly as it had started. But Perinda City was no more. Enterprise, Starship Enterprise, please come in. This is Perinda City calling. Enterprise, please... The media's nearly destroyed the planet's communication antenna. I'm losing the signal. Marinda 4, this is James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Are you all right? What happened? Where are you? Madman. Threat. Destroyed the city in other ground shell. Please help us. Great danger. I'm sorry, Captain. I could not maintain the communications link. It's all right, Lieutenant Uhura. Mr. Spock, those meteorites have destroyed a city it took honest, hard-working Federation colonists years to build. I can understand the great loss, Captain, but there is no need to generate unnecessary emotion. The question is, what do we do about it now? What we do, Mr. Spock, is proceed with caution. The message said something about a madman and a threat. Captain, you can't mean to say we're just going to sit here and do nothing? Indeed not, Engineer. But it will do no one any good to rush off into a possible trap. Scotty, you monitor us with the Enterprise's sensors. Sulu, check off. Keep the phaser banks and photon torpedoes armed and ready. Uhura, you lock the ship's beams with my communicator. Mr. Spock, you come with me to the transporter room. We're beaming down to Perinda 4. The sight that assailed Captain Kirk's eyes when he and his first mate materialized on the planet filled his heart with sorrow. The once proud, once beautiful capital city lay about their feet in dust and rubble. Even as they watched the mournful winds creating dark piles of dirt everywhere, the dazed Perinda populace started stumbling out of their underground shelters. Jim, Jim, thank heaven you're here. Tula, Tula Yorker, how did this happen? The Federation appointed governor of the settlement. I, I knew there would be troubles, but not this, not this. Try to keep your emotions in check, Governor Yorker. Do you know why these exceptionally large meteorites struck so exactly? A madman. A madman threatened us with complete destruction unless we evacuated this planet. But that's absurd. How could anything, let alone one man, control a massive group of meteors and cause them to strike at one place at one time? I don't know. I don't know, I tell you. All I know is that starting just a few weeks ago, we received the first of many threats over our communicators. Threats to leave this planet forever or die. I did not like it. 
The captain and Mr. Spock on the planet alone. He couldn't mean trouble. I'll tell you that, Doctor. Now, don't worry, Scotty. Our phases are locked on target. The transporter room is tracking their every move, and Lieutenant Uhura is in constant communications. Aye, I know all that, Doctor, but it doesn't set my mind at ease. Lieutenant Uhura, any message yet? There is a signal coming in, Mr. Scott. The captain? No, sir. As amazing as this may seem, the signal is coming from the middle of a meteor swarm outside the planet's atmosphere. But, but that can't be. Rocks can't talk. I'm sorry, Mr. Scott, but that is what my readings say. Establish contact, Lieutenant. Let's see what this rock has to say. And leave your orbit around Perinda 4, or risk total destruction. I will not warn you again. This is not a joke. You must leave this area of space and never come back, or else you will all be dashed into a million pieces. You hear me? This is your only warning. Leave or die. Dr. McCoy, quickly, take the command chair. Lieutenant Uhura, pinpoint the source of this message. Scotty, where are you going? My good doctor, I do believe we stumbled on the true cause of the Perinda 4 attack. If we can just trace the signal, we'll know where to find the men responsible for all the destruction. But, Mr. Scott, my equipment is not sophisticated enough to trace the car. Aye, I know, woman, but I know where there's some equipment that is. Where, Scotty? Where? In my engineering room, Doctor. I'm going there as fast as the ship's elevator can take me. Sit tight, my fellows. I'm going to find out who's behind this meteor attack. (laughs) 